Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Nuts County Career Mode. Boys, we are back, and it is a beautiful, beautiful moment, as you can see. This is the beginning of our new season, and yes, we did actually qualify for the qualifiers of the Europa League. I had no idea that the seventh place in the Premier League can play in the qualifiers and get into the Europa League. So all of the sadness that I had to go through at the end of last season, I didn't even have to go through it. We are potentially getting into the Europa League competition and that is something that I'm very much looking forward to. So if you guys are hyped about this Notts County career mode in which this is the first time that we will be playing in Europe, please make sure to hit that like button. Let's get this one to 2,500 likes. As you can see, this is our team in the background. Also, thank you guys so much for the immense support on the Crystal Palace career mode. It is very, very much appreciated as always. The first episodes of my career modes, I let them sit there for a day. So today, it is time for Notts County. Now, this season, boys, we are going big. We want to achieve big things. We want our team to get to a point where we can play for the top four. That is the target. We want to get Champions League football in this next season. So, right here, you can see our team with 52 million. 52 million is a huge amount of money. So you want your team to succeed, you need to spend money. So we are going in there and most of you guys in my comments down below were keeping on telling me, get Jovic, Luka Jovic, Luka Jovic. Everyone is talking about this man from Eintracht Frankfurt, who currently in our career is playing against Torino. He's apparently joining Atletico Madrid when the transfer window opens. So despite me wanting him in my, in my team, sadly, it is not going to be happening. That was my number one target. Reading through the comments, you guys were talking about him. And yeah, sadly, it doesn't work out. So we have to move on. And we have to find a second player. And I went down into the comments again. And Christian Kuame was one that you guys have suggested. And one that I also noticed whenever I was going through players in the Bundesliga with release clauses. Now, this guy's worth 34 million. I've never, ever used him. Never, ever heard of him. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So, uh, Kwame is the one that we want in our squad. And we are paying... Actually, am I paying the 44? Yeah, I think I am paying the 44 million on his release clause. Because the guy is young. He's 34 million. They would at, at least ask for 42, 43. So, I just uh, kept a little bit of time away there. And you can see, we have gotten him into the team for 100k. And there he is, a beast. We changed our formation to a 4-4-2, if you guys remember, in the last episode. And uh, we will be playing like that. Haaland and Kwame are going to be playing up top. And that is something that I'm very much looking forward to. High low work rates, 4 star weak foot, 6 foot 1. Fast, great finisher. That's what you want to have in your team. Now, in terms of value, Van Leuven is the best. 47 million is, is the amount that you have to uh, pay for him in order to get him into your squad. Well, we probably could ask for like 80 and still get that amount. Breno Fernandes, 41 million. But I had to make a couple of decisions. I had to sell some players, boys. Players like Dil Rosun, players like Rene Adelaide. These guys were being put onto the transfer list because we needed more money. I had plans for this team and I tried to get rid of players that just wouldn't get as much playing time. So by doing that, obviously, I'm trying to bring in the cash. I want to go and get players that will take us into the top four. In order to be able to do that, we need more money. So the first transfer has worked out. Kwame has joined us for 44 million. After that, we needed money. And this is perfect, obviously. The preseason tournament is obviously huge in order to get some additional funds into your team. And obviously, we picked the one where you can get the most 4.4 million though only, which is quite low for our team in my opinion. But we're jumping in there and uh, the first transfer offer, the first big one of the season boys, is coming in for Tornali, who potentially is the highest potential player in our team. But when I play games, he's not really the guy that I feel like is the best player. So I said 65 million. His value is set at 32. And they just said yes, 65 million. 
I'm sorry, but for that amount, you gotta let him go. You have to let him go. So Tonali, the man that was in our midfield, that was the future Pirlo, has left us for that amount. And I went and found Douglas Luiz, who is worth 24 million with a release clause of 13. I mean, come on, I couldn't say anything right here. I just could go ahead and uh, negotiate with him. That was the only thing I could do. And uh, the thing is, he's only one rating below Tonali. And he obviously has a much better haircut, as you can see right there. A very, very noticeable haircut on the pitch, which I'm looking forward to have. He's currently playing for Fulham, only 25 years old. And we, of course, have to bring him into the team. Four-year contract is what I'm offering. Obviously, um, his manager is trying to get in a release clause. 55 million. I just thought to myself, you know what? If someone's willing to pay 55 for this guy, sure, go ahead, get him. I don't mind. 79k are the wages. Uh, we're going to take away the uh, bonus as always because that kind of helps to um, try and save some money. Sometimes they ask for more money for the wages in general though. So that is what happened in that case. But Douglas Luis is joining into our team yet another player that i've never used before and that is why i generally wanted him in my team but that was not the only one that i found that had a release clause way below his value 27 million is the value of amadou haidara and his release clause is set at 15 million i mean come on that is just a steal. I just had to bring him into the team at this point. There is no discussion right here. We are trying to make some money on the road to glory and buying players for cheap and selling them for a lot. That is what we need to do. In order to create an amazing team in the future, we need to keep bringing in players and keep selling on players for more than what we brought them in for. That is how this business works. And after all, Notts County even is a business. So right here, 76k um he wants a little bit of bonus but we say no obviously they come back with higher wage demands 85k that was fine with me and with that we have just brought in two beasts into the team for very very cheap normally i think i would have had to pay like 60 million for both of these guys instead we only spend around 30 i mean that is great business so let's take a look into their stats. That is obviously the most important part. We want to see that these players are capable of playing in our squad. By the way, Rafael Leao, 84 rated at this stage. Uh, was another player that I uh, thought about getting into the team for a little while, but Kwame was a new one, a new guy that I never heard of. So I wanted to bring him in into the squad and I'm not regretting it so far now. Haidara and Douglas Luiz, both 83 rated. Douglas Luiz will be playing in that centre midfield position alongside Van Leuven, who I absolutely love by now. And a couple of players are dropping down to the bench and the reserves. So you can see that we have a couple of players that definitely need to go in the future. Now, Douglas Luiz, not the fastest of players, but really good dribbling, really good passing and great defending as well. So as a centre midfielder, in my opinion, an amazing player. Short passing, long passing looks incredible. Just the only thing that I don't like about him is his weak foot. He has a two-star weak foot, which obviously is a bit unusable. In that centre midfield position, a good weak foot is important. But now we go on to Haidara and you can see again, very, very good stats on this man. He can do anything as well. He can also play centre midfield if needed, but plus... He has a four-star skill moves, but yet again, another player with a really bad weak foot on him. Now, in the preseason tournament, as you can tell, we have won a couple of games, two games right there. And now we made it through into the final, and that means we can get a lot of cash into the club. We get an offer, though, for Romania right here, who is supposed to be a very high potential player, but for whatever reason, in our career mode, has just been stuck. Now, Godfrey. Another player that we love, and another player that has to go. We had him in the team for a very long time. He was an absolute beast. You guys remember his long shots. Now he is leaving for 11.5 million. Sadly, we lost against Brugge, so that means we don't get the full amount of the 4.4 million price pool, which really sucks. But after all, 15 million currently in the transfer budget. So we had to look for other players to sell. Now, Sabi was another one that is a good player. Don't get me wrong. As a super sub, he's a decent player with four star skills, four star weak foot, a great player to bring on with a lot of pace. But apart from that, 
he doesn't really offer anything. I just don't see Sabi being a main player for us in the future. Even as a super sub, I do have some great options on the bench, especially Kang In Lee. He has been incredible every time I subbed him in. 10.2 million is the amount that we do sell Sabi for. Now, the next one is Rene Adelaide. They are offering 14.2 million. I remember we bought him for his release clause of, I believe, 6 million. If I'm not mistaken, we paid 6 million for him. And now we are getting. 20 million in return absolutely beautiful beautiful business that is what you want to see Aaron's is not going anywhere no worries about that but it was time for the first game of the season Chelsea against Notts County can this team compete that is the big question that we go into this match with. And uh, I'm looking forward to the performance right here in the 31st minute. Kwame is on the ball, plays it into Haaland. Hopefully that will be a great partnership. But then Breno freaking Fernandes. He is the man. You know it. I know it. Incredible finishing on him down that left-hand side. He is a huge threat and just look at the skill. My man is on fire. As always, Breno Fernandes, one of the favorites, man. What a player. I'm so happy that we got him right at the beginning of this career mode. And he has stuck with us for a very long time. And these are the players that we are not letting go. Like Breno Fernandes, Van Leuven, those youth academy players we want to hold on to for as long as possible. And since Breno Fernandes will probably become one of the best players that we ever used in career mode, we're going to keep him around for a little while. So right here in the 68th minute, Jorginho plays a great pass down the wing. Vasquez crosses it in and then Eden Hazard misses a huge chance on the header right there. And in the 71st, Chelsea again on the ball. They lose it early on in their half. We get it to Kwame. Kwame with them skills. Sees Haidara make a run. Haidara with the crossover to who? Of course, it is Breno Fernandes. Two goals in the first match of the Premier League season. What a legend. What a guy. Incredible stuff right here. Great pass from Haidara, by the way. An amazing crossover to defeat of Breno Fernandes again scores on his weak foot we get a cross in we head it in and that is what we want to do Bashandi the left back he is six foot seven he is towering over everyone including the goalkeeper so we got to use him to our advantage in the future but that my friends is a huge win against Chelsea an incredible performance from these youngsters and what a start into the season for Notts County and Breno Fernandes. Now that we are past the first and a perfect entry into the Premier League season, Mere gets a huge offer right here. And obviously, it's another player that we have brought in in the past through a release clause deal. And they're offering 30 million. He's worth 23. So I thought to myself, you know what? We're going to say 40. If you can offer 40 for him, well, Okay, that was a quick negotiation. He has already accepted and Mere is going to be leaving the team. And, and you can tell again, guys, this is the key to success in a road to glory. You have to bring in youth talents to build up in behind the players that you buy to sell them on in the, in the future. And then bring in even better players into your squad while you keep on building the youth academy players in your squad. And it's exactly what we have been doing. Now we have 80 million in the budget. That is a huge amount to work with for future transfers. And I just had to. I just had to bring in a center back. Obviously, now that Mere has left us, we need a big one. And Upamecano is the one. 84 rated right now. He has a release clause of 58 million. I said, no, let's negotiate. And in this case, I wanted to offer 45, right? And they said 51. I wanted to add the sell-on clause in and offer 45 again. But instead, I offered 51 without realizing that it was set to 51.7. So after all, I went up to the price that he wanted and I also gave him a bonus. So that was a little mistake right there. But who cares? 
Upa Meccano is joining Notts County. This man has a ridiculous card now on Ultimate Team as a future star. Let's see if he can become a star for us as well in that centre back position. Great aggression, great sprint speed for a centre back. Absolutely amazing. 92 strength as well. Great short passing, amazing tackling as well. So Upa Meccano is the newest addition to the Notts County starting lineup. Now, we go into that Europa League game. After Crystal Palace, no, after Chelsea, we have beaten Crystal Palace 2-1. So after two games, Notts County on six points, which is nice to see. But now we are up in the Europa League. And that, my friends, is the game that we deeply, deeply care about. This is going to be a huge match for our team. We are playing against Hearts at home. Uh, no, we are playing at their home ground. Let me put it that way. So we are playing away. And I need to perform. This is the qualifying round. We have to win. I want European football desperately. I want my team to gain experience in European football. And this is the perfect chance to do so. We have worked so hard last season to get into the top six. Managed to get into the seventh position. And now here we are in the qualifiers. Since it was such a huge game, I decided to sim it this way and show it to you guys. And I was just hoping, man. I was praying that we could get it done. Haidara scores. So the new transfer is having a big impact already with a great assist for Breno Fernandes last time we saw him play. And now he gets himself a goal. It is 1-1 though as we go into the second half. And in that second half, they do score again. We were about to lose. But then Haaland steps up, gets the equaliser. 2-2. In an away game, that is not bad. Two away goals are great. Now, against Burnley, we sadly lost. In the Carabao Cup, we lost. And then we were up against Hearts again. We literally just had around six, no, five games within just one and a half weeks. I mean, that is just terrible. I just don't want to see that ever again. But right here, we are up against them at home. And we're going to sim it through again like this. We're going to see it live. Can we see our team succeed? It only really comes down to, can we score that first goal? And of course we can. Haaland scores it. Hearts obviously trying their best to come back into the game. And they're going to have a, a few chances. But then Haaland steps up again. He is the main man. He shows that he is going to be leading this team. Dil Rosson comes on as a substitute. A great victory. Retsos gets himself a red card, sadly. But what a game. We are playing European football this season. Europa League is the target, my friends. And that I am very excited about. I cannot wait to see how our team does. And this is our group. We have just been drawn, as you can see. And we do have... Genk, Metz, and Victoria Pilsen. When I look at those teams, I'm not really scared. And right here against West Ham, we do get ourselves a draw and we get into the transfer deadline day. As always, a very, very entertaining day. A day that a lot of people enjoy. Uh, it gives you 10 hours as always. And we try to get some deals done. We were just waiting for offers to come in because I really didn't have any moves to make at this stage. And right here in the sixth hour my friends it is a big offer it is an offer for our goalkeeper Müller who a lot of you guys just didn't like for whatever reason probably because he's not really like the most high potential player which I understand but still he did his job man and right here we go into the negotiations on transfer deadline day knowing that if we do sell him we have to bring in a replacement immediately so I said 25 million for a player that is worth 13, they said 23.2 and I was like, oh hell yes, take him. So Müller is leaving the team for 23.2. Now the question becomes, who comes into our team for him? And there was one guy and one guy only in my mind. Lum, the guy that we found on the transfer surge when we were just scrolling through it, we saw Lum with a 30 million release clause and we said hmm this guy's interesting he's already 82 rated which is higher rated than Müller so we sell Müller and we get ourselves hopefully a beast of a Finnish goalkeeper greetings by the way to everyone from Finland watching this video right now shout outs to you now we want this guy in our team 34k is what he's getting right now five-year contract crucial first team player let's go 
but we deny the release clause as always for players that we want to keep for a very long time we are not allowing that to happen so right here 39.5 wages cleared up Lam has joined us and he's an 82 rated goalkeeper the only question really is now that i have in my mind um how tall is he if he is tall that is great because um the goalkeepers that are taller do make a difference in that goalkeeping position in my opinion he has 80 strength 84 reactions um and he has some great goalkeeping stats as well as you can see right here quite well balanced out but at all six for two hmm that's okay it's not amazing but it's okay we'll see how he plays now against nottingham forest we win 2-0 which is nice to see against pilsen in the first game of the group stage in the europa league we lose and that was quite upsetting but it's nice to see Notts county after five games in the top six so we are only th uh, six points away from manchester united who are just steamrolling the league at the moment so there is a good chance for us to get quite close to United at some point. Hopefully that would be quite nice. Against Arsenal, we win 2-0. Against Spurs, we win 2-1. So Pilsen, how, did, how the hell did I lose against you guys? We sim the game against Genk right here in the Europa League again. And it's a draw. What is going on? The, these scorelines don't make any sense. We lose or draw against much, much lesser opponents. And then against Arsenal and Spurs, it's like, eh, easy game, win. <laughs> I just don't get it. But we're going to take that result. I'm going to move on from that point on. Because now we are up against Manchester United after the game against Newcastle, which was a 3-0 win, which I'm, again, very much happy about. Now... We're only one point behind Manchester United, the league leaders, and we are playing against them. And of course, I'm going to jump in there and play this game. What are you thinking about, man? We're going to jump in there. We're going to have some fun. and We're going to try our best to get Notts County to the first position in the league for the first time ever in the Premier League in our third season, I believe. Not our third. Is this our third? Yeah, this is our third season. First season, we fought against relegation. Second season, we got ourselves the seventh spot. And now, we are looking good, man. We are looking very, very good. So, we jump in there with Douglas Luiz, who is a great player. And Kwame scores early on, boys. That is the beginning you want to see against Manchester United. Two new transfers linking up. Douglas Luiz, by the way plays like an amazing player in that midfield i know he only has a two-star weak foot but i love his, agil his agility and i love his passing play and kwame right there making the perfect run and we score now Haaland wants to get on that onto that score sheet as well haidara down the wings he has the space he's gonna cross it in breno fernandez yes boys hey if there's one guy that you all know in this career mode. If I say his name, everyone knows what's going on. It's beautiful goals. Breno Fernandes puts it in there. Haidara yet again with a great cross and Breno on his weak foot with the 90 plus finishing that he has. It's just an easy goal for him at that stage. Now, we make a huge mistake. In a 69th minute, I take down my opponent and I give a chance to Manchester United to come back into the game. They get a penalty. Lukaku is going to take on this one. Let's see what he can do. Lukaku against our goalkeeper. Lam is conceding Manchester United back into the game. 80th minute. Another chance right here for Manchester United as they push forward with Miranchuk and Rashford. Great pass, which is followed up by another incredible pass. And Manchester United managed to score once again. What a scoreline at this point. 82nd minute, it is 2-2. And I just had to push forward, man. I just had to go all out. I wanted this moment to be mine. And we get it with Kangin Lee. He has helped us multiple times in the past as a super sub and now he's pushing forward again on his right foot. No, on his left. He hits the post. That, my friends, is the last moment of that game. It is a 2-2 draw against United. How unfortunate. Against Mets we win in the Europa League, which is very nice to see. A draw against Leicester, a win against Watford, 
We go into the month of November. We play against Mets again. Another 2-0 win. Very nice to see. Then it's Wolves. 1-1 draw. And then another good performance was needed. And it came in in a 3-0 win against Blackburn. And then a 4-0 win against Pilsen. And we have made it through of the Europa League group stage. Now, Notts County still in that second position. If we win our next game, things are looking quite good for Notts County because we will only be one point behind Manchester United. And that's huge. That is just huge. So right here, we go into this game against our dear opponents, Liverpool, my team, the team that I support in real life. And I was hoping for something big. Van Leuven. Normally, we only see him scoring from regular play and right there he gets denied by who other than Loris Karius. I mean, seems legit. But right here, Breno Fernandes is on the attack in the 19th minute. He shoots. He hits the crossbar. We get another chance later on in the 30th minute. Van Leuven into Haaland and into Breno Fernandes. He's gonna do it again boys on his left foot. This guy doesn't even use his right foot. He just smacks it in on his left one over and over again. Breno Fernandes in a 4-4-2 formation man. He is clutch. Like legit. Every time I attack I have him on the overlap. I gotta say man I don't think I've enjoyed a youth academy player like this in a long time long time and we attack again with Kwame who obviously has been a decent transfer so far Douglas Luiz is pushing forward crossing it over to Breno Fernandez on his left foot again and then Kwame his chance has been wasted we get into an attack again another free kick 22nd minute Van Leuven is gonna try again and this time he is going to bring it home and it's 2-0 against Liverpool what a result two youth academy players again on the forefront scoring the goals for Notts County Van Leuven and Breno Fernandes away at Liverpool this is a huge result for us if we can keep it this way this will be a big game 58th minute, Kirivella on the ball, Immobile now playing for Liverpool, plays it into a guy that we had brought in in our Liverpool career mode, Herving Lozano scores against us, I mean what are the odds of this happening, the player that we had in our career mode scores against us and right here it's a huge save from Lam. He has to make that happen. Immobile about to score the equalizer in that position. And we push forward again. Kwame now on the ball. He's cutting his side. He finds the perfect pass. The perfect partnership. Kwame and Haaland are getting it done, boys. Come on. Liverpool have been beaten with that goal right there. The destiny of this game was finished it was clear we knew what was about to happen it's three points for Notts County against Liverpool and that was beautiful that is a huge step forward in our performances and probably one of the best performances we had against a big big club and after that performance I was very very hopeful when it comes down to the Champions League places now after that game against Liverpool uh, which we won 3-1 we go into the month of December and obviously this month is clutch right before the January transfer window it's a 4-0 win against Southampton it's a 1-1 draw against Genk right here and then after that we play against Fulham where we got Douglas Luiz from 2-1 victory right there against Manchester City it's a draw Bournemouth is the next opponent and that game turns out to be a 2-1 loss which I was quite upset about and then we lost again against Everton and we won against Sunderland so a bit of an odd result or a few odd results uh, in this month I did not expect that stuff to happen but still we are in that third position we're only five points away from the first place team in the league but that is not what I should be focusing on we are eight points away from dropping out of the top four Notts County has established themselves as a top four team can this team somehow push for the title already I do not believe in it yet. Haaland though, this is a big issue that we had last season. Haaland is the top scorer. In 19 matches, he has scored 14 goals. 
And uh, Kwame, I believe, has like eight goals already. On top of that, Haidara is on eight assists. No, sorry, on six assists at the moment. Our team is playing some beautiful, beautiful football. And I'm very, very proud of that. I want our team to continue performing like they do right now. Paulo Slam, great addition into the team. And a lot of players have grown. You can see Ivanov right here. He's a 75 rated goalkeeper by now, which is nice to see. Gasperoni goes up to a 79. He is going to be a super sub for the future for sure. Bashandi grew to an 80. Very nice to see. Uh, Richardson now at a 77. Currently on loan at Leicester. Van Leuven has grown to an 86. Hunt on an 85, sadly currently injured together with Bashandi. Breno Fernandez at an 86. Lam has grown to an 83. Great growth in the squad at the moment. Overall, when you look into this team, you can see that there is potential for top four. Yes, there is. Douglas Luiz and Haidara have been great additions. Kwame has been a beast so far. Really enjoyed him. Adams has been growing on the bench. Ampadu has been growing on the bench. Kangin Lee is one player where I'm thinking he can become very important in the future, but he keeps asking to leave the team. Right now, boys, we have 16 million we can potentially sell some of our players. Let me know in the comments down below who should we sell and what should we buy to go and chase down the Premier League title this season. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace.